Yo, what's going on people? It's Muggsy, upcoming hip-hop artist from Sydney, Australia, up the land down under. And right now I'm going to do a Q&A, you know, questions and answers, little interview video for the spot for hip-hop TV. Because they sent me 16 questions on, you know, doing this little audio, I guess you can say, interview. But I'm going to have some fun with this, you know, go a bit in detail and hopefully... You know, my fans and your fans, you know, viewing this audio or listening to it, you know, in their free time, get a little bit of in-depth about me, Muggsy, the five-element hip-hop kiddo from Sydney. So, I mean, let's get into it and just have some fun with this. So, question one, here we go. What's your favorite comfort food and why? My favorite comfort food, man, is honestly... When you get a couple of beers into you, that's the Aussie way, and have a massive, massive grubby feed of KFC, the Colonel. Like, you can't go wrong with that, man. There's an order that I always, always get, is I get three Zinger Burgers with mayo and supercharged sauce on them, and a popcorn, a regular popcorn chicken, and a bottle of water as well. And people look at me like, why don't you get like a, a Coke or something? And I'm like, nah, man, you got to stay healthy. No pun intended. But um, yeah, man, have a couple of beers and stuff and have like the, the KFC as well. So that's my comfort food, man. Just a nice, massive, grubby feed. Question two. Out of all the things one could be in the world, why did you choose to be a rapper? Well, I'm 28, man. Um, I was born in 91 and my birthday is January 22nd. So... You know, next year I'll be 29, but I started doing hip-hop music or even knowing about the culture of it, man, when I was around the age of 14, so about 14 years ago, and um, yeah, that was kind of like the early thousands kind of era with artists like the Three Trio, the Three Horsemen, you know, Eminem, Dr. Dre, 50 Cent was just on their all-time high, and then you had other artists, which was, you know, like Jay-Z and Cameron and... Damon Dash, and then you had obviously the South, which was like Chameleon and Paul Wall, and they called it the Platinum Era, man, every artist was wearing like Platinum Chains, and you know, the Triple X large clothing, man, but I remember being at the age of 14, man, and I was just kind of fighting through my adolescence with mental health and depression, and um, you know, really trying to, I guess, find my image in life, and I was always running around with the bad crowds, man, which was escalating that you know, I guess you could, can say not that really positive vibe, and man, around that time, I used to, like, look at the, the, these guys, you know, like, of course, Eminem, and, uh, like, these artists, and they would have such a uh, power with them, you know, like, they would have such an aggression, which would be, like, whatever society threw at them, you know, in their communities, or in their societies, that were negative about their image or just well-being or whatever was going on in the world they knew how to flip the script and use that aggression aggression as a social message to i guess you can say like public enemy said fight the power um and, and i mean man i was very attracted to that and i wanted to write about you know my personal experiences and, and my pain and stuff but not just as a personal standpoint but uh, or whoever took the message out of my rhymes to try and figure out, you know, maybe I went through the same circumstances or the same, um, you know, avenues and stuff as what Muggsy was doing, so, I mean, yeah, man, I guess you can say it was therapeutic at first, but then it was also just the love for hip-hop, man, because when I, when I, you know, started getting older and, um, you know, really thinking outside my box and outside my bubble and stuff, I uh, I didn't want to do it as a music platform. I wanted to learn as much as I could where the culture came from because I'm so secluded here in Australia, man. But this was like early days of, you know, the internet, you know, still have to read books and watch TV and just listen word of mouth and stuff. But I mean, uh, I loved learning where it came from, you know, like the 70s of, you know, Grandmaster Kaz and, you know, Cool Herc and Cool G Rap and... Um, you know, African Bambada, you know, Grandmaster Flash, and, you know, like, just the pioneers of, of starting this game off in the Boogie Down Bronx of, of New York, you know, with the block parties and stuff, 
And then you had the 80s, which was, you know, Eric B, Rakim, and, you know, LL Cool J, and Run DMC, and, you know, speaking of white artists, like MC Search and Pete Nice from Third Base, and the Beastie Boys, and then you had the 90s, which people say was the golden era, because it was just that bar on bar, you gotta bring your bars to the table, man, and... Even though I grew up in the in the thousands era, man, um, I was born in the nineties, but I was too young to know about that hip hop. I was more, um, I guess you can say, or it around the early thousands. I was more, you know, I, kn I knew what was going on. You know, I wasn't a kid; I was a teenager, man. Um, but yeah, the nineties, man. Looking back, I, I think that would that would have been the pinnacle era, man, because you had you know Nas, Wu Tang Clan, DMX. Oh uh, man, Tupac, Biggie, Big L, you know, Big Pun, NWA, like just so much talent, man, you know, and I mean, in, in a sense, that's why it's very hard for me to kind of appreciate what's going on now. Like we still have dope artists, man, but like the argument always is you got to look out for them, look out for them, you know, and I mean, like back then, man, you didn't have to look out for them, we were spoon-fed so much greatness, man, when you grow up in an era where it's like so much bars and so much talent and so much, I guess you can say, wordplay rhyme scheme, and you think, man, like how, do, how does Nas write something like Illmatic, how can I top that, you know, you kind of, you really can't sort of switch your mind off to be like, alright, I'm gonna, you know, pop in a little Yardy album or something like that, you know, so I mean, man, uh, I feel that uh, I've been doing it for a while, and I just feel like as a real MC of the House of Hip Hop and stuff, you have to have a knowledge of that behind you, um, to be more of a dominant MC, not doing it as a music art form, do it as a, um, a cultural, you know, perspective, if that makes sense, man, so that was question two and a long damn answer, but it gives a little bit more in depth, Question three, name someone other than a rapper who has been great, greatly influenced, <laughs> okay, I'll do it again, Na question three, name someone other than a rapper who has been greatly influential to you and why they were influential, honestly, man, my parents, like, like how, how can you, how can you go wrong with that, man, like, come on, you know, they, they they gave birth to me, man, and they brought me into this world. So, you know, my, my dad, Rick, my mom, Sandy, like, you know, my family, man. Like, you know, I've got two things in life. One is hip-hop and one is my family, man. So, I mean, they're, they're my, my bread and butter, man. And, you know, like, they've kept it, you know, they've kept me good. They've kept me in good terms, man. And like they say, there's always a door open. So, you know, uh, family, family is everything, man. Question four, what was your childhood like growing up in Copacabana? Yeah, man, so normally I say Sydney because it's more easier for worldwide viewers to know where I'm from, but um, I'm actually about two hours north on train by the Sydney CBD, like, uh, you know, from where all the opera house is and the Harbour Bridge and I guess you can say Finding Nemo. Um, Copacabana is kind of like a, you know, country sort of coastal town, man, and... Um, I mean, like, you know, to any American tourist or any tourist in general, man, if you want to come to, you know, the coast and stuff, man, and you're afraid of all those, you know, creepy crawlies, like spiders, snakes and stuff, we're going into summer at the moment, and the creepy crawlies come out to play, man, like Houdini said, the freaks come out at night, um, but these freaks come out in daytime and nighttime, man, so... Um, childhood, man, I mean, yeah, like, it, it, I guess it was cool, it was colourful, I don't know, like, all I know is just pictures, man, because i got such a bad memory, but, um, <laughs> I mean, the only thing I can remember about my childhood, man, I was a, I was a huge, growing up in the 90s, man, I was a huge, huge Batman fanatic, man, you know, like, I, I wanted to be that dude when I, I, I was older, man, so that's the only memory, memory I've got, um, growing up with the Michael Keatings, Val Kilmers, and George Clooney's, man, um, you know, we can look back and laugh at George Clooney, but as a kid, you never know that sort of stuff, so, yeah, shout out to Batman. <laughs> Question five, has rap taken you out of Australia? If so, where did you go to? Um... No, it, it hasn't, uh, with gigs-wise and, um, you know, holidays-wise, but, you know, with social media, such as interviews like this, and radio play, and magazines, and 
features and stuff. That's the majority of the way I've been out of my own country. Um, but I always got to work out the time difference because different countries are a different time zone. So, I mean, you know, for example, if I'm doing one in the States, it, it, I'd be like maybe sometimes 15 to 17 hours. So, you know, what, like 9 o'clock in the morning, my time would be maybe 8 o'clock at night their time or something maybe i'm getting that time difference wrong but you get the gist so yeah man i mean i've been outside of the country with social media but in physical form not yet and hopefully so you know hopefully soon when my third album drops and there's bigger opportunity you know question six what are your main takeaways from each performance you do and how do they impact impact you um I feel that I won't shy away from anything, man, you know, I mean, and I think that's a a true factor as a dedicated artist, like, you know, if you have a stage presence, like, if you have a stage, not stage presence, a stage fright, and you, you're unconfident to perform in front of small and large crowds, then you're not really going to get far in the industry, man, because, you know, it just shows that you know, this industry is so cutthroat, man, and so brutal that you have to be sort of a confident person and give it your all, even if you are not accepted, or even if you look like a fool, you still got to get up there and do it, man, you know, whatever the circumstances and the cost may be, and I think what I take away from performances, man, is me as a person, as an MC, I've kind of got that backbone because I know the knowledge behind this, you know, like, I always get, you know, sidecast with the, the stereotype of, oh, he's pulling the whole Eminem act, you know, and it's funny, because if I didn't have that knowledge behind me, man, um, it, you know, I'd, like, probably, like, wallow in the corner, but it's more like, oh, he's pulling the Eminem act, and I'm like, dude, like, you do realize there's more white artists than Eminem, um, you know, that take our, you know, art seriously, like, come on, man, like, MC Search, for example, you know, so it's like, get your mind right, get your mind correct, um, but when it comes to performing and stuff, man, yeah, I just, I think what I take away from it is whatever stage you put me on or whatever mic you put me on, man, I never shy away from it, because like I said, any opportunity is a great opportunity, and whatever I can do to showcase myself Muggsy to there, that's what, that's what I'm happy with, you know, Question seven, which was your most entertaining interview? Most entertaining interview? Um, man, I've done over 300 interviews, man, in my career. So I'm not trying to boost myself or nothing like that, but legit, because I'm just grinding nonstop and coffee's my best friend, man, to keep me up and keep me finding these opportunities and doing it, man. So I can't, man, I can't really give you the most entertaining interview I've done. Um, yeah, so, I don't know, I'll just say this one, yeah, let, let, let's go with this one, the spot for Hip Hop TV, man, I'll give a kudos to you for even doing it, so, you know, you are another one to the list, man, so I'm thankful for that. Question 8, what does Muggsy Brady stand for, what is his brand, or what angle are you going for? The five element hip hop kiddo, man, knowledge is key. Question 9. Has a hip-hop song ever made you cry? If so, which one was it and what made you cry? Not a hip-hop song, man. Um, but personally, the song that always gets me a bit of a tear in my eye, especially the music video, like, not... Sometimes you listen to music, man, you're just listening to it, you know, and you're not really listening to the, the lyrics or, you know, you're just more listening to the sound um, or maybe you're playing it in the background. But sometimes when... I'm going to say this as a fact, like, sometimes if you really focus into the lyrics that they're saying, it really, some songs really trigger the heart, the heart chords, man, the heart strings, um, and the number one that always gets me all the time is R. Kelly's I Believe I Can Fly, and a lot of, you know, my brother always looks at me like, I'm crazy, he's like, what makes you so sad about that, and I feel like it's just so much passion that we have a power to make a difference in the world, and that, that last little bit where the orchestra comes into it, and they're all singing it like that, I believe I can fly, like that, and, and, he, and then he's like doing the, you know, the woo, and stuff, and they're like just like all singing with him and that, like, it, I'm even getting chills thinking about, man, like, 
that yeah like that orchestra at the end man just brings a tear to my eye man because that's such an impactful song so i mean yeah that would probably be the number one song that always gets me okay question 10 imagine yourself as a star who would you shout out and who would you give a thanks to in your inner notes of your defining album man honestly okay one, no, two two groups in life. One, my family, of course, without a doubt. Like I said, you know, family is everything. And two, the pioneer fathers, man. Come on. Like, you know, Grandmaster Kaz, Cool Herc, African Bambada, Grandmaster Flash. Like, like, come on, man. You know, if it wasn't for those dudes, man, on what they did on August 11th, 1973 in the Boogie Down Bronx... Who knows if hip hop would have came into you know the scene and the the world and the music industry today, man. You know, so if it wasn't for those guys, like I said, we might not have even had hip hop today, man. And I'm thankful for that because it's given me something to live for. And I'm not saying that in a cliche, like because you know, like taking it for granted. I really love this to death, and I really, you know, this is my overall well being as a person, like. It's changed me over time from being that 14-year-old adolescence mental straining kid, man, I guess you can say, to the man I am today. Whether, you know, the way I talk, walk, dress, opinionated, you know, um, society views, social views, my, you know, own thoughts and stuff. If someday, like, if I woke up tomorrow and somehow, you know, hip-hop vanished or hip-hop was taken away from me, man, then you've taken me as a person and my identity away, and that's just how crazy this culture is what's given to me. I love it too much, man. So, they're the number twos, man. My family and obviously the founding fathers who started all off, and it's, I'm gonna say this to any new artists coming up into the game, man, really appreciate those guys, man, because they don't get enough recognition in the mainstream world, like, to true hip-hop heads, we know the founding fathers, but to anyone who wants to get into hip-hop, man, search those dudes up, check them out, check their music, check their interviews, check their, uh, docos and, you know, born and background stories, man, because they need more recognition for this gem of hip-hop, what they created, man, for sure. Question 11, are you a cat or dog person? Oh, I'm a dog person, 100%, man. I always say cats are useless creatures, man. You can't play with them. You can't wrestle with them, man. They just sit there and they look at you, man. They're absolutely useless creature, man. So, yeah, dogs. I love dogs, man, especially well-trained dogs. Like, if the dog's not well-trained and it barks all the time, man, it's a pain in the ass. Like, why even have a dog? If your dog is well-trained and you know, it's something you, you know, you can have as a companion, then it's the best creature to have, I recommend anyone, you know, anyone listening to this to get one, and I used to have a dog man, but he passed away back in 2000, and it was last year or the year before, man, it's been, it's been so long, but yeah, he died of old age, so yeah, poor little, you know, my poor little staffy Lenny died, yeah, Lenny, um, but yeah, man, it, it, uh, it's, it's amazing when your pet goes, and sometimes it holds a real burden in, in your man, if you've had that real bond with him, like, still to this day, man, like, I haven't even gotten over his, his death, because, you know, when I'd be doing music work, or, you know, finding gigs and stuff on my laptop, or contacting people over the phone, he would always, come into my room and, you know, like, well, I want to scratch or want to paddle, or, you know, I want to wrestle and stuff, and uh, I love him, man, I, I used to love Lenny, and, um, yeah, man, I, I mean, it's very hard, I don't think I'd get another dog, man, because I feel like I'd be replacing him, but, yeah, rest in peace to my little man, and I, I'm getting a bit choked up, man, because I'm just reminiscing on him, so, definitely a dog person, man, for sure. Question 12. How big is the Australian hip-hop scene? Do you have a favorite rapper from Australia? Yeah, man. Um, it's crazy because we're so secluded, you know, across the globe. And, I mean, to outsiders that, you know, think of Australia, think of us as, you know, Crocodile Dundee and, you know, that's not a knife, this is a knife, or Dingo ate my baby and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, and, uh, like, that is kind of... Alice Springs, like, in the heart, you know, the country, like, the heart of 
um, the middle of Australia, but when you come to Sydney and, you know, where I'm from, man, there, there's not really any of that, that's very stereotypical, you know, Australians, man, um, not all of us, we're just normal civilization, man, like, I guess you can say a smaller version of the States or something, uh, but when it comes to the, the you know, the hip-hop scene, man, we have a lot of love for it, man, like, the culture of it, and the true essence form of hip-hop, like, the MCing, the b-boy, and the graffiti, um, the DJ scratching, the knowledge, man, it's crazy, we got, like, a lot of, you know, clubs and open mics, and someone's always holding, like, a cypher or an open mic, or, um, just, like, a gig somewhere in the CBD, and, you know, I'm always roughly down there, just not, even if I'm not performing, just chilling out with the hip-hop crowds, man, um, so we more, we're more stemming towards that, you know, real aura and atmosphere of hip-hop compared to the flashy stuff where it's like, you know, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, and pop bottles in the club, and all the money, and all the riches and the fame, like, there's some teenagers that really try, you know, and jump into it, um, because maybe that's just the era they're, you know, getting brought up on, but that, that doesn't fly, you know, much that, in, in this game over here, man, you gotta have your bars up, like, if you come into, like, the cypher or the open mic, and you're pulling, you know, that, you know, mumble drill kind of, you know, what do they call it, mumble drill, um, I know there was a oh, trap music, um, you won't get very far, man, like, maybe, you know, you might get booed out of the crowd, or, or the club, man, so, I mean, we love it to death, man, and whatever new comes out of the culture, like, you know, an element or like a knowledge, maybe the pioneers or something said and or a doco or just something, you know, that comes out and we haven't, you know, heard about it, but it gets around like word of mouth. Um, we always want to attach ourselves to it, man. And it, it's funny because when the big stars come over here, you know, they're still thinking in the stereotypical frame of mind, which is like, oh, I'm going to go there and it's going to be just land. You know, there's not going to be civilization, man. And when they come here and they see that, you know, we are so hip-hop orientated, and we love it so much, man, they they, they become wide-eyed, they're like, dude, like, sometimes they even say it live on stage, they're like, Australia is like second home to hip-hop, man, so that's how much we love it over here, um, and a favorite Australian rapper, man, me, myself, and I, can't promote anyone else, I'm just promoting myself, man, question 13, if you could travel to one place and one place only, where would you go and why? Personally, man, my number one destination and place I've always wanted to go to, um, and I think it would be so surreal to go to, is New York. You know, if I could just stand in front of that apartment of 1520 Sedwick Avenue, South Bronx, man, um, and just know what, you know, just stand in that rec room where, you know, the original first day one um, block party, you know, happened, that, that would be pretty surreal to me, man. Like, I'd probably have a tear in my eye of just how incredible that feeling would be, so, you know, I'm, I gotta save up my money, man, because, you know, like, what are they, they say money's not everything, but it sure damn gives you more of an easy lifestyle to travel and do other stuff, man, so, hopefully I travel to New York someday, man, for sure. Question 14, if you could say one thing to an aspiring rapper, what would you say to them? Personally, man, okay, Karis once said in an interview that hip-hop was brought up on uniqueness, you know, originality and authenticity, right? And, I mean, you can have your influences, but if you're really mimicking them and following, like, their footsteps and not really showing what you can do and who you are as a person, you're not going to get that far in the world of hip-hop, man. And that's why, I, like, you know, I was 14 once, and we all were, and I wanted to be like, you know, the M&Ms, the 50 cents, and all that, and that's how I used to write starting off, not my demo material, I mean just writing in my school notepad, that's how I used to write, like M&M, real, um, psychotic in a sense, you know, like how we used to write the Slim Shady LP and the Marshall Mathers LP, just to get that anger out, you know, um, but when I saw that interview with him, and these OGs would be preaching that kind of stuff, it gave me, a light bulb went off in my head to be like, all right, you know, I can have my influences, but what can Muggsy really do, you know, because it's just, you know, like they say, you're not going to get far in it, but with the kids now, man, I always say social media is a 50-50, one, it can branch your brand out, 
like really well and showcase you before you know it was hard copies selling it out of the trunk of your car and um you know all that kind of kind of jazz and like trying to get to like local radio stations and more it's just a click of a button but i feel that the buffoonery and who can do the most radicalist thing is shadowing the talent and like talents get you know getting put on the back burner man and i feel that's like a no-go especially with me man like i don't i don't appreciate that because if I see like a video of some rapper tattooing his face up and wearing dresses and he's gone viral and next minute like there's probably a 14, 15 year old kid the next Nas or something and he's, you know, getting 300, you know, 300 views only on on, on his, you know, SoundCloud or, or his, you know, YouTube. That doesn't fly with me, man. Like that just shows his society dumbing down to be, you know, bored into that shit, you know, and destroying what this beautiful culture once was. So, I mean, to say to any aspiring rapper, man, find your originality, but also think outside your bubble, man, and outside your box, and respect who's paved the way before you. Like, do your history, learn about the five elements, learn about the culture, and I feel that, you know, if you do learn from the 70s, 80s, 90s, thousands to now, it'll make you more of a prominent, um, knowledgeable MC compared to someone just you know, rapping in their own bubble, man, of, like, you know, their SoundCloud kind of era, man, um, and it'll show you some more interest, and it, it, it will smarten you more up, not this dumbed down MC, man, so that's why I can say knowledge is key. Question 15, what is your favorite song that you created and why? Oh, my favorite song, man, that's a hard one, um, I believe my favorite song, man, is probably My Journey. Yeah, it's the final 20th track on my album, Understand Me. And, I mean, yeah, I feel like that song is a nutshell of my career, man. You, you know, like a four-minute track. The first verse is how I started getting into this culture. The second is how I, you know, um, developed myself as a key. And the third is how I escalated that to where I am now. So, my journey... Check it out on Reverb Nation or even my fan page of Muggsy, M-U-G-Z-Y. But to worldwide viewers, that's M-U-G-Z-Y. It's pretty much on there and you can easily find it. So go check out my journey. And the final, final, final question. Question 16. Do you have any parting words for this interview? Well, personally, guys, I want to give a shout out, a big, big, big shout out to the spot for hip hop tv for sending me these 16 questions and wanting me to do this interview audio um because like i said man any exposure is great exposure and we need more platforms like you guys to showcase underground artists like myself have a chance to be heard so thanks so much to you guys man and you have another friend fan follower here in sydney australia the land down under the home of the heath ledges hugh jackman's crocodile dundees and of course the five element here pop kiddo mug z and the other thing I want to say, support my fan page of Muggsy, M-U-G-Z-Y, but to worldwide viewers, that's M-U-G-Z-Y. That will keep you up to update with upcoming albums, interviews like this, um, the new doco about my career that Sydney Film School is working on with me, and just other things who I get to meet along the way. So check me out, drop me a message, drop the spot for Hip Hop TV a message, show the support for them, and keep rocking on for the rest of 2019. I'm out, guys. Boost, guys. Boost, guys. Boost.